Um, <laughs> and he says, you basically, you know, you fold space time. And puts this, a pencil through puts it. Puts a pencil through it and, and unfolds. Christopher Nolan completely ripped it off for Interstellar. It's the exact same explanation. Um, yeah. Christopher Nolan, I understand, is a big fan of Paul W.S. Anderson. Right. For, for, for those of you who don't understand, you can't go faster than the speed of light, according to Einstein's theory of relativity. Time stops when you hit the speed of light. Mm -hmm. So, in the universe exists something called time space. And it's basically like a fabric, right? You can't go faster than the speed of light, so what you have to do is warp the fabric like of space time. Uh, you never go faster like the Star Trek Enterprise, that spaceship in the show Star Wars. The Star Trek Enterprise you never go faster than the one end of the day to a ten warp way. So he says, we're going to Proxima Centauri and we're going to fold time and space, but he accidentally opens a gateway to Hellraiser. <laughs> Specifically Hellraiser, not Hell, Hellraiser. I have such sights to show you. Yeah, let me show you. Right, it's something that's worse than hell. Mm -hmm. And it's another dimension. Yes. This is when it gets a little Lovecraftian. Yeah. We got Lovecraft, we got Hellraiser, a little bit Alien. Right, and I get I get the, see, see the thing is like the Lewis and Clark looks like a grungy, disgusting, weird spaceship. And then when you get on the event horizon, it's like a uh, Art Deco, H.R. Geiger painting. And I, I totally get the decision. Mm -hmm. If you're making a horror movie in space, the ship should be scary. And that's like the logic. Sure. But to me, it was like confusing of who was on what ship. But there's a, a little so more to it than looking. that. Oh, I see. I love the production design of it. I think it's perfect for this type of movie. But mm. it's more than just that it's grungy and Giger-like. Like, apparently they, they based it on, because there's obviously kind of religious, a little bit of religious themes in the movie, and they I, based it on the, the uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Okay, like a church cathedral. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's why it has that long part in the middle. It's supposed to be like the hallway. And then the, the, Altar. Uh, the, the cheese grater tunnel. Looks like a meat grinder to me. The rotating spherical thing. Okay. The, the Professor X uh, Cerebro room, yeah. whatever it was. That has giant spikes yeah. for no reason. And <laughs> Which nobody gets impaled on. Doesn't that lady? She what falls she... and she hits the ground and blood splatters everywhere, but she doesn't get impaled on one of those spikes. Oh. That seems like a missed opportunity. It, it really does. That might be a deleted scene. Yeah. There's apparently, notoriously, this movie was cut down a lot, but... Release the Anderson cut? They, they can't, though, and that's a whole other story we can get into. Oh, well, I'm glad you did some research. I did a little bit of research because I, I was curious. zero. <laughs> <laughs> you finished the movie. I guess that's, I re that's an accomplishment, the right? But the, the thrusters are like the, the towers of the Notre Dame Cathedral turned kind of sideways. Okay. So this is a little bit of religious imagery. A little more to it than just trying to make it look grungy and scary. Well, well, spoiler alert. Was Sam Neill like a weird satanic worshiper or did he get co-opted by the evil forces? I know he was somehow maybe trying to bring his dead wife back to life. I, yeah, I he know. was hung up on that. I, I think the implication, and maybe this was lost in cut, trimming the movie down, I think the implication is, was that he was on the ship originally. Because he says, like, I'm already home at one point. And I don't know the details of how we ended up back on Earth, but it, it, the implication to me is that he's already gone through the wormhole or gone through the black hole, and that's why he's all... Well, wouldn't that have been a neat part if they saw him in, like, the, the crew log footage? That would have been cool. Like, sure. he's in the background, they freeze frame, and he's like... Yeah. You'd think he would bet on the maiden voyage. It, it treats the, it as if he was, and that's why he's crazy now. Yeah. So it's, it's a little murky there, yeah. But that when they're looking at the, the crew footage, that leads to one of my favorite unintentional laughs of the movie. Mm. They're seeing all these horrific images. The, the captain like yeah. pulls his eyeballs out. And he's holding them up to the camera. And the, 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 comedic, the timing, the comedic timing of, of Lawrence Fishburne shutting off the tape and just going, we're leaving. Yeah, yeah. We're leaving. I, I wrote that down in my notes, actually. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's that's not unintentional. I think that was. Would well, you think that one was intentional? Th There's yeah. some stuff in this movie that I, I wasn't sure about. It was it was sort of like connecting with the audience. Like yeah, we're we're leaving. Okay. Like I I laughed out loud, and I'm sure most people did. I think it was intentional. <laughs> All right. The unintentional. Well, in that case, points to them for the intentional comedy in that moment. Right. I, I laughed at the unintentional comedy. S several sound effects. <laughs> Like, like by the end Warner of the Brothers movie, sound effects? By the end of the movie, it's like the, the uh, whoever was mixing the audio just gave up. Because that fight scene with Sam Neill at the end, yes. those stock punch sound effects. Ooh, and they're, that. It's not just that they're stock sound effects, it's that they're like right in the forefront of the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It's They're so comedic sounding. <laughs> Well, and like the part where uh, Sam Neill, he's gouged out his own eyes and he has the space uh, nail gun. I don't know what to, what to call it. <laughs> and he shoots it through the window and then like, you know, the space vacuum starts sucking everything out the window and. <laughs> like all the props that are flying around. And I just, I, I just picture woo. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Like so, like wacky sound effects because it, it kind of looks funny. Yeah, that it's it's weird because the first half of the movie really takes its time. It has stuff that doesn't work, but it, it's it's more atmospheric and it's kind of building yeah. building that that you know that tension. And then at a certain point, I think it's right around the point when the Cooper character he's launched off into space and he's like, I got to get back to the ship. I'm saying all these things out loud so the audience understands what's happening. Think, think. All right, I gotta get back to the ship. I gotta get back to the ship, all right? All right, I gotta blow my air tank. I'll blow my air tank. He's like, he goes, oh, damn, how do I keep finding myself in these situations? Yeah, and it's like all, it's like the movie just, like, gave up. Shit! Where the fuck am I going? Why is this shit gonna happen to me? Fuck. But it's really yeah. weird. Because I like a lot of the stuff leading up to that, and then tonally, it goes off the rails that at that guy, point. That guy... That guy, Cooper, should have died ten times over. He, like That is not the character that makes it to the end of the movie. It's a really weird decision. Well, he f he's like, I'm going to blow, blow all my oxygen out of my... Like, the movie is fairly, like, scientifically accurate to its best ability at that point. But yeah. then he's, like, flying through space towards Neptune in a little <laughs> spacesuit, like, like, hoping that he can make it mm -hmm. back to the event horizon, which... I think was in the atmosphere. Like how the yeah, fuck? Yeah, because when, when, when he starts shooting back towards it, it's nowhere in sight. So yeah. it's that far away. I, I I think it was like in the upper atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And like how the fuck is he going to accomplish that? And I think they had to put it in the atmosphere so they could get away with spooky lightning storm. Because mm. yeah. that, that was something I was thinking about. I was like, you don't have lightning in space, but I guess technically they're in the atmosphere. Right. So that's fine. They, they justified that. <laughs> but yeah, him shooting back. It remind, I know that happens in Gravity, right? But she's using a uh, fire extinguisher to kind of shoot herself yeah. around. Yeah, and and it's like that's the point of the movie Gravity is that yeah. they're flying around trying to figure out problems. Like in this situation, this this like nightmarish horror movie, and then you come up with this like almost Looney Tunes esque logic of him flying around. And on top of that, his performance, where and he's, he's like, "I'm coming back, motherfucker." Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cringy. It's weird. It's weird. It's it's uh, it's completely at odds with the, the nightmare hellscape vision stuff. Yeah. Which is the stuff I like. So I, I don't know. It's all over the place. It's an interesting movie. I, well, I think the nightmarish hell kind of gross out stuff like the, I don't know, what, whatever character was disemboweled and all his guts are dumped out. Was it Jason Isaacs that happened to? Yeah. Um, like, I know that's your thing. Uh, you like gross, like, horror movie stuff. It's not that it's gross. It's a striking visual. I, I, yeah. There, I mean, there were some, like, legitimately... I think the best scene in the movie is when Justin... Baby Bear, they call him Baby oh, Bear. Oh, yeah. The yeah. actor's name is Jack Noseworthy. Jack Noseworthy. Who... Was in some stuff in the 90s, and he then was I on guess he show, completely vanished. Yeah, he was on a show called um, Dead at 21... Oh, wow, yeah. Do you remember that? In the MTV show. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, I, I, I used to laugh because I, I would call him Jack Earworthy <laughs> or Jack Lipworthy. 
The man has a fairly undistinguishable nose. That's true. But his name is Jack Noseworthy. And so I always thought that was funny. <laughs> and then I didn't hear about him after Event Horizon. Yeah. But that part where he, he's like possessed or traumatized or I don't know what the hell, scared by hell. Mm -hmm. And he goes into the, the room, the going out into space room. Yeah. And, uh, and then he realizes, oh my God. And then they depressurizes and, ah, and they have to rescue, Lawrence Fishburne has to fly in and rescue him. Yeah. And it's like blood is like shooting out of his mouth and his eyes. And like, like that part was legitimately well done and tense. And, but no, I like that sequence for the most part. There was like a legitimate, like re real world slash horror world interaction. Like that character was doing something under the possession or spell of this evil yeah. that he didn't know he was doing and then he snapped out of it at the last second. And then it's like, oh, that con that those two things work together. Yeah. He put himself in the airlock and it's gonna kill himself because he's he's so scared of this nightmare land. Mm -hmm. And then he realizes like, what, what the fuck am I doing in here? Help me, help me. And he's like, help me. What, what is going to happen to me because of the cold vacuum of space yeah. is horrific. Yes, <laughs> and then, and, but then the other things where it's like, oh, you know, spooky, spooky images, the lady's son. Oh, I like that too. Uh, she, she felt guilty. She had to leave her son behind with her, I guess, estranged husband. She calls her ex, her ex-husband, yeah. right? They all have their, and he's like, in a wheelchair. And so she sees visions of him where his yeah. legs are all fucked up. Like, it's like a like a haunted house movie in space, which you have, which contrasts something like Alien, which is more realistic, more like this, monster this, movie. In yeah, space. It's, it's a monster. That's a monster movie in space. This one is like a weird kind of clash between like science fiction, real like science and supernatural stuff. And I don't know, that interests me. The oil and water, those two things. But that's for what me. drives them mad. These are scientists that are now dealing with, with these. Uh... But they're not scientists, they're EMT people. Okay, that's true. I'm your best friend, okay? I'm the lifesaver and the heartbreaker. He's a rescue technician. This is Peter's medical technician and my pilot, Mr. Smith. I, I'm trying to think of a movie that compares Hellraiser in space. It is a better Hellraiser in space movie than the real Hellraiser in space movie. Space is scary enough. I think that's why the airlock scene is so memorable to me. You understand what happens when yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> that and, airlock opens. And it was opens. like frightening. Yeah. Because it, just the, the reality of it. And then that is, that kind of stuff was completely, you know, deflated when Cooper's flying around in a, in a jet pack yeah. towards Neptune in the middle of the fucking solar system. All the stuff with him. Probably and then die when, from radiation from fucking Neptune. When, when Sam Neill's like eyes are plucked out and he suddenly looks like a Cenobite and uh, Cooper's coming back towards the ship and he hits the glass, and he's like, oh shit! Yeah, he's, he just happens to land right outside the front window yeah. of this gigantic space. <laughs> and then his reaction too is like, yeah, I, I, it's, I don't know. It's 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 the Paul W S Anderson schlock, yeah, which c carries on to all those Resident Evil movies yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> this is borderline experimental. <laughs> this makes no sense at all. <laughs> Which is why uh, I mentioned earlier, there's apparently a longer cut of this movie that was more horrific. It was like 30 minutes longer. That part in the end when Sam Neill's like, let, let, let me show you these visions or whatever, and there's all those quick flashes. Apparently all that stuff was more drawn out. You saw more of it and they had to cut it out to get an R rating. Um, so there's there's ta people talk about like, oh, if that stuff was back in, it'd be a better movie. It's like, no, you still have that. Cooper character that's out of place. You have all these weird tonally inconsistent things. I don't yeah. think more, more gore wouldn't save the movie. No, and it wouldn't make it scarier conceptually to me. Yeah. I don't know, like I described as The Shining in Space, uh, one part in particular, the blood part. Um, oh yeah. But also this like, you know, abandoned 
haunted ship is similar to the hotel, mm -hmm. and you know, there's the the, the visions, uh, nightmarish visions, and Sam Neill character is very similar to the Jack Torrance character. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's there's a lot of similarities, but I think when your horror is grounded in our own reality that we could relate to, hell, and <laughs> and spaceships just don't work oh see that's the stuff that did work for me i can't i can't describe the my... idea of like again going back to the shining where it's like all these horrific things happening in this hotel but a party you know like is thinking about the fact like, i mean they they have the excuse in the movie why they can't leave because there's a storm or whatever but where it's like oh they could conceivably get out of there when you're in space you have nowhere to go i think it's just our tastes i don't sure. to me i mean it's... we can both agree that the movie's not scary though Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, good. You, you weren't under your blanket going like this? No, like, no, no, no. no. Okay, I'm talking sure. about like conceptual. That's why I say it would be a perfect movie for a remake because there's a lot of the concept stuff I think is interesting. It's just the, the Paul W.S. Anderson schlocky execution that, that really uh, uh, kind of ruins it. I don't know if I would have executed it differently. I was trying to think if, if the spaceship wasn't designed so, like if it just looked like a regular spaceship yeah and that if the, if you the had contrast would be more that juxtaposition would would make it creepy well i believe the the original idea for the room with the the black hole what do they call it in the movie it has a name the we'll call it the, the warp engine something engine they call it um gravity quantum singularity the create the quantum singularity is another name for a black hole right. i don't i don't know what they call but, it but that room i guess the original idea was to make it more kind of minimal almost like 2001 like and the black hole is always open. Mm. And that's what fuels the ship. And for, I think, partially for budgetary reasons, but also to try and make it look spookier, they made it into the more... Yeah, it looks like a medieval torture device. Yeah, they, they, they kind of went in a different direction, partially for budget, but also, I think, because they're like, well, we got to make it look like a horror movie. Exactly, <laughs> and, and that's that's the big gamble. Yeah. Is, is like, yeah, okay, the, the, the warp core device looks like a medieval torture it looks like a medieval weapon or something. And the hallway leading to it is this spirally spiky nightmare. Yeah, and it, and it looks like that looks like a funhouse <laughs> corridor. And, and yes, it looks spooky. They gave a scientific reason for why that is there, though. Is it something sure. to do with the gravitational yeah. pull or yeah, whatever? Yeah, they give some gobbledygook right. as to what but, it is. But we're talking like producer production design oh, speaking. Sure. Like, do you 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 make it look like a regular spaceship? and you roll the dice that people will be scared by the th theoretical stuff of the black hole it leads you to an alternate dimension that's filled with nightmares and hell. Mm -hmm. uh, is that scary enough or do you double down and add, add extra scary on top of scary and make your spaceship look like a horror movie? See, that's why I thought from the beginning, Sam Neill was a Satan worshiper who's, who who created the spaceship because he secretly theorized that he could open a gateway to hell and he wanted to do it almost like the building in Ghostbusters oh. designed by uh not Vigo that's the second movie I wanted to say Vigo the Carpathian who is the architect the architect's name was Evo Shandor I found it in Tobin's spirit guide Ivan Shandor. Ivan Shan Ivan <laughs> Shandor. Good job, Jay. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Everyone out there, give Jay a round of applause. Thank you. Evo. Is it Evo Shan? No. The architect's name was Evo Shandor. Ivan Shandor. Ivan Shandor. Ivo, Evo Shan. Something Shandor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a weirdo name, right? Yeah. He designed the building to be a lightning rod to open the dimension once Zool is ready to... Right, and people won't know what he's up to because it just looks like a building. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that's why I thought the build, the spaceship, Event Horizon, looked so creepy was, and has, it has fucking Roman numerals above the, the warp engine. Mm -hmm. But it, I don't know, other than Roman numerals are old. <laughs> Which has no place on a spaceship. And, and why is your... You know, who's speaking, someone was speaking Latin, demon. That was something I wanted to bring up, is they're playing back the recording. Yeah. They're like, we have this recording of the the crew, the Event Horizon. We can't figure out what it means. And it's like they had a whole team of scientists and researchers all looking. No, none of them could figure it out. Then this one crew member's like, oh, it's just Latin. 
Mm-hmm. Well, Lamb's Nobody a, knew. Uh, it was like somebody in, in this team of scientists and people on Earth. Well, and, they probably and, could have used a computer to scan it, and the computer would probably figure it out. But I mean, you know, Latin's an old language. It's a dead language. Well, you sure. Know, people know it. But my question is, why is the demon from an alternate dimension speaking Latin? Because it's spooky. Language from Earth. Yeah, Latin is spooky. It's in all the horror movies because it's ancient. Right. And it's 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 biblical times lang- yeah. language. That's a dead language. So when, you know, someone who's possessed by a demon speaks Latin, you know, nobody fucking knows Latin. Some people do. Really smart people learn dead languages and speak them. <laughs> but all like uh, you know, some possessed twelve-year-old girl isn't going to know fluent Latin. That's certainly then a demon speaking through her, right? Because right. that's spooky. So why is a demon from an alternate dimension speaking Latin? I don't know. Because is it really the hell from biblical hell that exists? We don't know. A lot of unanswered questions, Jay. Like, why did they make this movie? <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving. I really like the the design idea to to line the the connecting tunnel that separates the the warp drive part of the ship from the the crew part of the ship mm-hmm. with explosives. Not only that, but big uh, signs on them that say explosives. Like, couldn't they just decouple it? <laughs> You know, like a, you know, how, you know how train, trains have those like, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they go like this. Or the idea, if you have to detach, you can detach. Yeah. Yeah. It just you just like hit a button and it. Like, but that's again, that's the the Paul W S Anderson action schlock, where it's like that's the decision being made, yeah. is to make it because then then you can have a big explosion. Oh yeah, I know why they're there, Jay. Which is interesting. Oh, I know why those bombs the, are there. The, between the explosion and then Lawrence Fishburne's character has, uh, he, he's has this fear of uh, a crew member that he left behind to, to burn alive. Yeah. And that, that's kind of his, his fear. That, Haunt. That's what's haunting him throughout the film. Um, so there's lots of fire-related stuff, and that, which is interesting that the, sh- the shape of the ship or the design of the ship was based on Notre Dame because there famously was a fire a couple oh, of years ago true. in Notre that's Dame. That's true. Uh, are you saying the movie caused that fire? I'm saying it's, it's the movie. Is, it's one of those what they call a cursed film. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you think someone like was playing the movie like in Notre Dame, yes. like while they were doing the construction, and the the DVD sparked and caused the Notre Dame fire? <laughs> I'm saying that's exactly what happened. That that now that would make that would take your theory a little step further. Mm-hmm. I was watching a 